Hi book friends and welcome to 20 plus books to read this summer. I've separated this into two categories, the one that are like typical summer books, like romance books and stuff, and not so typical summer books that still kind of give summer vibes. And we're going to start out with the not so typical ones. Book number one is Sundial by Catchy Ward. This book is so scary and so twisted. It's a horror book and it's about this mom and her family of four and her family story, like her growing up in the desert. And it's all interconnected and it's mostly about the mom and her two daughters that are both like I think under 10 years old. It's very dark and very twisted. It's very hot because it is partially set in the desert and so I think this is the perfect summer book because you get so uncomfortable and so hot reading this so I think it's perfect for summer. Book number two is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Obviously the title is giving summer vibes. Summer in Malibu or life in Malibu is summer always basically. So I think this would be a perfect summer book with all of the fancy parties and stuff. It's just giving good but tragic summer vibes and Taylor Jenkins Reid no matter what season she She's always a good idea. Then we have Gallo Glass by Barbara Vine. This book is also very dark and twisted. There's basically three main characters and it's about their friendships slash relationships slash obsessions with each other. It's also very dark and it feels kind of eerie. You get kind of uncomfortable reading it, but you get uncomfortable in the same way as you get kind of uncomfortable on a hot August day. So I think this would also be a perfect summer book. It's also quite short. Most of these books are quite short. So if you have like a beach vacation and you just want to read a book a day, these are are all perfect for that too. Next up we have The Talented Mr. Ripley. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's set in Italy. Ergo, it's a summer book. It's so twisted and so weird and so dark and the ending was unexpected for me. A lot of the things that happened actually were unexpected. Um, I guess you could say it's not a thriller but bad things happen. Um, I thought like from this cover it would be good vibes. It's not good vibes at all. Basically the main character is obsessed with his friend and tries to become him by doing some pretty messed up things. Um, but I think it's also very fun and very interesting and I could not put this down. Next up we have some books that I put on my TBR for this summer so I haven't read these but I've heard really good things about them. Book number one is Big Swiss. It's basically about a therapist and her assistant and her assistant becomes obsessed with one of their clients and the client's name is Big Swiss and so Supposedly it's very weird and funny and just very interesting. So this is definitely on my TBR for this summer. Another summer TBR book is The Guest by Emma Klein. This is basically about a girl who dates a boy that's rich and then he dumps her and then she tries to figure out how to stay in these like high up circles without still dating him. It's supposedly also kind of weird and messy and like hot in like a bad August summer day um, way. So I think this would be also very fun to read and I'm looking forward to it very much. Next up we have The Stranger by Albert Camus. This one's a classic. It's very short so this is why I picked this one. This would be perfect again as a read in one day book. You could also read this with your friends and then talk about it later because supposedly it is kind of confusing and it leaves you speechless in a weird way. <laughs> um, I haven't read this as I've mentioned but this is definitely on my TBR. Something that cannot be missed on any summer TBR is certs or it's Tzitza. Um, this book is set in Greece. It's about Tzitza, so a girl who's sent away by her father, Helios, a Greek god, to live on a secluded island and you just kind of follow her quite tragic life. You follow her through all these interactions with other Greek mythology, like people, creatures, gods, whatever. It's very interesting and as I've mentioned, any book set in Greece is just perfect for summer. Another Greek book is The Song of Achilles. I love this one so much. Achilles' friend Patroclus is actually the narrator of this book, so you hear it not from his perspective but from his um, friend's acquaintances' perspective and it's about their relationship and how it develops and what it develops into and what they go through and it's very hard to not spoil anything but I definitely recommend this. This will have you feeling all the feels. And another book set in Italy is The Witch of Portobello. This one is basically dark drama and like gossip about a supposedly, like supposedly a witch. It's really good. You hear like these stories and the people from the town tell them to somebody and it's all about the witch, supposedly, supposedly a witch. Um, it's so interesting. It's also kind of dark and weird but I really enjoyed this and it's just dark gossip and I love it and it's perfect for summer. Moving on to the more classic summer books. For me a classic summer book is a romance because it's just good vibes but I also really love like dark gossip type of vibes on my summer vacation. Anyways, um, next up we have the kind of interconnected series by Abby Jimenez, Part of Your World, Yours Truly and Just for the Summer. I've read these two parts. This one's on my summer TBR. These two books were some of my favorite romance books ever. This one I loved the first half. The second half kind of let me down but it was still really good. This one I just finished this a couple days ago. 10 out of 10. So good. I love this one so much. And this one obviously is set in the summer so it would be just 
perfect for summer and Abby Jimenez's writing style is so good. It's very emotional. I always love her male main characters. They are always so good and they make me giggle and I love them so much. So I definitely recommend these and I would also recommend to actually read them in the recommended order. So start with Polar Free World, then go to Yours Truly and then Just for the Summer because they do reference characters from earlier books and it's just more fun if you actually know what they're talking about but you could also read them as standalones. Next up we have The Ultimate Summer Book. Happy Place by Emily Henry, one of my favorite books of all time. It's so good. It's set at a cabin in summer in like this small coastal town. 10 out of 10. I love how relatable and real her characters are. The struggles that they have, obviously they're bad, but I can relate to them and they just make the characters so likable and so real. And I am obsessed with Emily Henry's writing style. 10 out of 10 recommend this one. Another Emily Henry favorite is Book Lovers. It's set in a small town also during the summer months. So this is perfect and I love that they are both both like in the writing like book world they work both um i think as publishers or something it's so interesting to me because i honestly i would love to work in a book world because i just love reading and i think it would be so much fun but i also love this male main character i think his name is charlie and the small town setting is also always a 10 out of 10 for summer next up we have good material by dolly alderton i just want more people to read and obsess about this so i'm just gonna put it in here the male main character goes through a breakup and you follow his perspective and he is honestly quite an Annoying. I was fed up with him and frustrated and annoyed a lot of the time but I think that's what makes the book so special and so emotional because you get to see the breakup from a different point of view that I personally probably would not be in because of the way he acts. Some of the things obviously are very relatable but he's also very weird in other situations but this book is still five stars and as I've mentioned the fact that the male main character is not super likable and quite annoying is part of what makes the book so great. Then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo if if you have not read this, make this your sign to read it. Doesn't matter what season, as I've mentioned, Taylor Jenkins read is always a good idea. I love this one so much. It had me crying. I loved both of the main characters and also with the seven husbands and the drama around it, like the fun drama, sometimes it's fun, is also perfect for summer. So this is a book you should read no matter what season, but read it this summer. Honestly, it's so good. Just pick it up and read it now. Another Taylor Jenkins read book, as you can tell, I'm kind of obsessed at the moment, is Daisy Jones and the Six. Such a good book. I love love the interview style of this and also of Evelyn Hugo. Here you get to hear all of the band members perspectives so they all tell a story from their point of views and also they're like tour manager and everything and it's so interesting and so unique. I love that you can listen to the songs as you read so that's what I've been listening to while reading the whole book. The Aurora album you can actually listen to it on Spotify. I love how Taylor Jenkins Reid makes her characters like fictional of a fake made-up band seem so real and even puts music out. 10 out of 10. And now let's get into some crime books because I always love me a good thriller on vacation. First up we have The Scent of Death by Simon Beckett. The like hot summer and like hot temperatures kind of play a role in the beginning of the book where they like start working on the case so I think it's perfect for summer. It's so dark and there's so many plot twists that I honestly did not see coming and I read a lot of crime books. At this point I can see a lot of them coming but this one it was really good. I'm um, one of the few five star thrillers that I've read actually so I really recommend this one. Then we have Verity by Colleen Hoover, a very different Colleen Hoover book, but I love it simply because it's a thriller and it's so good. This woman is invited to this family's house and she's supposed to write there and then things happen and it gets so twisted and weird and I know Colleen Hoover is not everybody's favorite but this book is honestly so worth it. I loved it so much with the like family drama, the weird flashbacks in time and the ending was not what I expected at all. 10 out of 10. And lastly if you want to start a series, The Family Upstairs and The Family Remains also very good. They also give you kind of a weird eerie uncomfortable feeling because it is about basically a family that was turned into a cult if I have to sum it up very quickly um, and it's so weird and you follow like the kids around and I actually did enjoy the second part even more because the kids interact with each other more and then there's also a little bit of time pressure added um, and it's just a good time um, obviously not a fun time because it's very traumatic and very horrible what happened to the kids and just what happened in the house in general what was going on but very interesting and written in a very different style for me and I love it so much so these are all of my books you need to read this summer recommendations and let me know if you've read any of them what you think of them if you have any suggestions on if I like these books what else I should read next and if you read any of them based on my recommendation please let me know how you like them I'm always so curious what other people think of the books that I like I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you can add a lot of these to your TBR and I'll see you in the next one